memang tidak bisa mengelabui pada waktu yang dapat bayar, cuma wajib kita wajib bayar. Kalau begini adalah masuk pada zaman ini desa siapa tahu si pemaham buka bincangnya begini nama sesi dia pada ramu cuci dia mahu dia macam kita masuk sambil dia gunakan aku tapi aku pernah cuba mengangkat juga dua batu mereka dalam zaman sama dengan nama kita di rumah dia buang kayu nanda muda dia cuci mula dia aku cari cuci susu aku cuci susu bila cuci susu bila nanti dia you don't expect to be an American number yang ini nak cuba kita buka pemaham buka aku cuci dah that means it's by the plan Tak ringan kau dengan trade ini, dia sambil foto betul tambah di ramu, baca cuci betul tambah la. Nampak tak? Kau mesti gagal. Mana ada kau tanya kuku? Aku mesti tu yang pernah bantu aku fikir kau anggap. Kalau tu turut, kalau tu kau ni jenis kerja dekat security. Kau gagal mana? Bukan orang orang betul gagal bari aku. Aku gagal cara aku baca. Kau tu nolkan aku buat kengera ini dia aku tu dia cek aku sam. Cepat 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 kau ni. Kau tu cepat 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 kau tu buat. Baba ni nak pergi buat cari na, kita tahu macam ni kita dah mula. Good afternoon everyone. Hello. Hello? Is someone there? So guys, good afternoon. Today we'd like to introduce what we call Newton's laws. Who can remind us of what Newton's laws are? Amina. Yes, teacher. Do you remember any Newton's law? <laughs> Marcel, do you remember any law? Yes, teacher. Yes. Hey, give me that law. For every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. Every action. There is an equal but opposite reaction. Okay. Cynthia, do you recall one? Every, everything continues in its state of rest in a straight line unless acted upon by an external. Everybody continues in its state of rest. or uniform motion. In a straight line. Unless acted upon. By an external force. Uh, Esther, can you give us the third one? Esther? I mean, are you give us the third one? Esther, maybe it's not true. Amina. Yes. The rate the of change block. in momentum. Mm. The rate of change is directly proportional to the force applied. Take place in the direction of force. The 
rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied. and takes place in the direction of the force. Now, normally, people state these laws in this order. The first one, they call it the third one. The last one, they call it the second one. Then the second one, they call it the first one. Those are just codes given by people. But we don't have idea that Newton's law or state Newton's first law or state Newton's second law, you know. Idea there, eh? we are meaning, for example, they can ask you for the law of inertia. Hmm? Who knows what inertia is? The law of inertia is that first, second one. Whereby inertia is the reluctance of a body to start moving or its relaxance is to stop moving once the body is actually started moving. For example, we jack in a car, when the car is moving, when it's starting to move, we are going to move. So that tendency of you trying to move forward and then you jack backwards. So you move and then you, you have a tendency of moving and then a tendency of stopping, but it actually you are moving is what is can be called inertia. Now from Newton's law, I have interest in this last law. From where we have said force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum. Whereby V is the final velocity of the body. U is the initial velocity of the body. T is the time taken. F is the force applied on the body. Yeah, in this sense, uh, this is coming from F is directly proportional to the momentum after minus the momentum before divided by the time. That is what we are calling the rate of change of momentum. So if that is the rate of change of momentum, if you remove the proportionate sign, you'll have force is equal to K M V minus M U over T. So with this F is going to be equal to K of M into V minus U over T. So with this, you'll have force, Remember from equations of motion, V is equal to U plus AT, whereby AT is actually V minus U. When you divide by A, you divide by A. T becomes V minus U over A. Therefore, K times M times A. Thus, F is equal to K M A. And this is the definition of resultant force. But resultant force, if a force of one Newton acts on a body of mass, one kilogram, accelerating at a rate of one meter per second squared, then you have one is equal to K times one times one. Thus K will be equal to one. 
Then for that reason, force is always equal to mass times acceleration. This is where the definition we all cram of resultant force comes from. So resultant force is always mass times acceleration coming from such a definition, which brings us to have F is equal to M. Yeah? Unless if someone has a question there, I can proceed. Any question? So if no questions, there are some explanations that can be set around uh, these areas. And they can ask you to explain, for example, why a high jumper lands on a soft mattress, or why a long jumper lands on sand. They are the same explanations also when they ask you to explain why a person who is catching a fast moving ball draws his hands backwards. A footballer draws his foot backwards when stopping a hard pass. Hmm? So they can ask you the same questions. But the interpretation of the answer is the same in the sense that uh, they all depend on Newton's second law, Newton's uh, law, which brings about resultant force, the net force you're going to experience. So in this sense, if you look at this equation, we have seen force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum. Now, the force increases if the time you take is big. So force increases as the time does what? Decreases. So if you decrease the time, the force on impact is very high. Whereas if the force is to be having a time which is increased, the force will drop. Now, when a person is jumping, a high jumper, and they try to land on a soft mattress, what will happen is this high jumper will end up being in position to, it takes more time for, when he lands on the top of the mattress, um, I want to show you something here. So this is the mattress. And this is the hard surface. And the person jumps, the high jump. Has finished jumping. When this person jumps and comes and lands on the mattress, 
instead of reaching the hard surface very fast, is going to be delayed as the mattress is going to compress itself. So when the mattress is trying to compress itself, the guy still takes some time before he reaches the hard surface. So the reason why the guy lands on a mattress is because he wants to increase the time of motion so that the force on impact can be reduced. So when you increase the time of motion, the force on impact will be reduced. That is why we land on a soft mattress. It's the same explanation why we land on sand. It's the same explanation why someone draws their hands backwards when catching a fast moving board or pass or stone. Even when people are catching, you throw stone up when catching it, you draw your hands downwards. You pull the hands down in one way or the other. Why? You're giving this stone some more time to travel. And then when you give it more time to travel, the force on impact will be reduced. So that is what is happening. So even when the person is pulling their hands backwards, they are increasing the length of travel of the ball or of the stone. When they increase the length of travel of the ball or the stone, the time is going to increase of travel for the ball or for the stone and the force on impact on the body's hand, someone's hands will be reduced. So that is the explanation for a goalkeeper who draws his hands backwards when he has been given a very hard shot so that he can make the ball travel some more distance before he can stop it. The person who is stopping a hard pass of football also pushes his leg backwards so that he can increase the length of travel of the ball. Then the ball on impact with his leg does not count, uh, does not burst, make him sustain any injuries. So this explanation comes from Newton's law, which is this one that I've just derived. So there are many explanations that will come along the way, but you just need to know, one, increase the time, two, when you increase the time, you reduce the force on impact. All of you, I think you've boarded cars, eh? and public means maybe. If you find someone who knows how to drive, when they reach a hump, they try to bend over the hump. They don't want to face the hump directly. When you face the hump directly, the tires take a short time on the hump. So they, they cut, you get a big shock. <sighs> yeah, you shake yourself. Even the car gets shocked so much. But now if it goes over the hump slowly, like as if it wants to go around, then over, the tires take more time in contact with the car. So at the end of the day, the force on impact that is produced by this car road harm is done what? It's reduced. Therefore, if the force on impact is reduced, then the car will not experience a very big shock as it will experience it when the driver just passes over the harm. Someone has a question in the chat, I guess. Uh, Nelda Esther says can't hear me clearly. Why? Take more time on exposure to the to the hump. Pardon? I beg your pardon on the part where I said that the the tire of the car takes more time on the hump. Okay. Uh, look at this. This is the car, my phone. Then the power bank is the hump. Now when the car comes. Eh? If I come directly like this, the car will jump and fall back very fast. Now, when the car comes and takes this direction, as if, as if it tries to fast bend a little, then it comes back. I think you've seen some drivers trying to drive like that. When those drivers are trying to drive like that, they are trying to make sure that the tires of the car take more time on the hump and if they take more time on the hump, they will reduce the force on impact that will be experienced by that road hump. Whereas if they take less time on the hump, the car is going to experience a very big shock, a very big force of impact because the time it would have taken on the hump is very small. And I've said, if the time is very small, then the car ends up doing what? The car ends up experiencing a very big force. Okay, sorry, uh, let me first uh, speak to Hajat here briefly.
Yes, Hajat. Okay, so with that, uh, I wanted to show you some illustrations here. Now, this is uh, trying to describe Newton's third law. And uh, for Newton's third law, You see that for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction, which was one of the first laws someone gave me. Uh, I've not yet shared, okay, let me share. Oh, so you can see all of you now. So uh, one of the applications, we have rocket vehicles or space vehicles, or what you call rockets. When they are going to space, there is combustion in the combustion chamber, and uh, the, out, the byproducts of the combustion chamber, which comes out or spits out like fire, normally they use hydrogen. They come out in a very big volume. So the momentum of those, of those uh, exhausts gives, they move out, the momentum of those exhausts move out at a given velocity, but with a very big force, which force brings about another, drug which is experienced equally in front. So this is a force due to the exhausts. Then this force gives an equal but opposite reaction, which is a forward force experienced by the engine. Another example is, um, if you have pushed a wheelbarrow, have you ever checked how you step on the ground when you're pushing a wheelbarrow, which is heavy? You press your foot, pushing it backwards, but the wheelbarrow goes forward. The same applies when you're pushing a car, which is stuck in mud. You guys push your feet down, you step so hard on the ground, then that force you exert on the ground is respectively given on your forward motion in your hands and then you push the car. So that is Newton's law of action and reaction being equal, but opposite. Uh, there's another one here you can look at. Also it is talking about a rocket. If you take a close look, it's still running. When you look at these bodies, yeah, uh, these two bodies, when you take a close look at them, this body here, this one, will remain at rest as long as there is no force that is acting on it. So if a body comes from this way, and it comes and strikes it, it can move in this horizontal direction. So it is only if an external force has come to push this body, otherwise the body will stay where it has been without leaving, unless an external force is made to act on it. Um, look at also this one. This is also depicting Newton's law. A person who's trying to row a boat pushes the what? Pushes the row stick backwards. 
But this backward force gives an equal but opposite reaction force, which brings about the driving drag force, which is forward. So all these are illustrating what we call Newton's law. And that is basically the Newton's law of action and reaction. Mm. Another one you can talk about. I've talked about what? Catching a throw, here it is. Yeah. When you throw a ball, you create action and reaction forces. So the action force on the ball is by your hands. Then there is a reaction you get from your hands. That is the force you experience from you, okay? That is why when you throw the ball forward, you end up seeing your hand going where? Backwards. Um, all these can be asked to be explained. Another one I've seen here. I talked about acceleration from the rate of change of momentum. Yeah. Now, when you look at these bodies being pushed, there is this body being pushed here. There is a body being pushed here. When these bodies are being pushed, it is because we have a change in momentum. The momentum we had before and the momentum we are having after, which brings about acceleration. So you end up making that body start to accelerate. And by so doing, if you do that in a given time, then the body will definitely accelerate and experience a force. Uh, another one here I can talk about. Look at football. I told people in the morning, yeah, I'm a Liverpool fan. Yeah? And if someone is going to score a goal, the reason why the referee ends up blowing the whistle, when you either knock, you touch, you pull, you, the opponent, you might think it's minor that the guy is just throwing himself down. But this guy is executing Newton's law. The body will remain in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line. Someone should mute. What does that mean? It means the body will remain moving as it is unless someone has made it. Do what? unless someone has made it leave. So if someone is going to score a goal and you, the defender, you want to stop him, the mere fact that you end up either touching him a little, you knock him a little, you pull him, whatever small thing you do to him, that small thing you do comes in as an external force. So that external force can distort the body which was initially moving in a straight line. Remember, this person was moving in a straight line, going to score his goal. For you have come and you have applied a small force. Any small force can remove that person from the straight line. And that is why most of our players fall down. So don't just say, ah, this guy is over falling down. He throws himself down. No, he's executing Newton's law. So people fall down because they are touched when they are in motion in a straight line initially. People can fall down if they are pushed when they are initially at rest. People can fall down when they are running, when something small touches them. Even vehicles can overturn, even bicycles, uh, even uh, bicycles, even motorcycles, they can all lose stability and fall off the road. Reason is because they are going to experience an external, an external force. So whenever an external force is applied, chances are very high that the body 
can lose the state it was in. It can be maybe it was in a state of a straight line. It can be when it was maybe in a state of rest. Take a look at this example. You've seen these, these items in movies, these ones. Let me show you this one. It has taken so long. All of us, I think, have seen this in a movie. We know that a moving ball can be sent to find these resting items. You see, they are resting initially. Equilibrium. They are not moving, they're in a state of rest. Until this moving ball comes and knocks them and makes them lose their state of rest. Otherwise, they can never fall down. They will always be there standing. But because an external force has come in, then they end up doing what? Collapsing. Another illustration I can show you in this category also is. Uh, uh, this ball was being what? Ball was put here, it was not moving until this lady came and knocked it, it started moving. Uh, the car is moving in a straight line. Now there is a force it's going to experience from this wall, which will either cause it to move away from the straight line. Or this person, because he has seen the wall, is going to turn around or turn aside the wall. This is an example I was explaining. You can take this screenshot. When a bus suddenly starts, remember inertia, I talked about inertia. When a bus, a bus suddenly starts, the passengers sitting or standing in the bus tend to fall backward. This is due to inertia of rest and can be explained as follows. When the bus suddenly starts, the lower part of the body of the passenger which is in contact with the bus moves along with the bus, while the upper part of the body tends to return to its state of rest due to inertia. As a result, the passenger falls backwards. So this, look at me, I'm seated in a car. My upper part can get into motion because the car is moving, but my lower part is not in motion. So this upper part wants to go back and set where it was supposed to be set. That is back to the state of rest. And in that case, I feel jerking in one way or the other. That is why if you're jerking while standing in a bus in the corridor, you don't move your feet. Normally it's your body that moves to and fro and fro. When a bus suddenly stops, the passenger sitting or standing in the bus are thrown forward. This is due to inertia of motion and can be explained as follows. When a moving bus stops, the lower part of the body of the passenger is in contact with the bus, suddenly comes to rest, where the upper part of the body tends to remain in a state of motion. So when the bus is stopping, the lower part, because the bus has stopped, the lower part in contact with the bus also stops, but the upper part of your body tends to first continue in motion before it stops or before it comes to rest. So for that reason, you end up experiencing that tendency. So to avoid that or to minimize that in cars, there is use of seat belts because that can bring about you getting an accident. When you get an accident, you can fly through the window screen. So to minimize that, we put there what? We put there situation whereby a seat belt is put into place. Okay. I think you've seen some of these examples of such balls. A ball like this one, This ball comes, finds these balls at rest. It hits it, exchanges the energy 
the energy is lastly given to this one, then this one will be displaced up this way. Then it oscillates back like that. So these ones in the middle here, they will remain in their state of rest in a straight line because energy is being exchanged from one ball to another until this last ball absorbs the energy. So you see this object it was initial at rest, meaning nothing was pushing it. Then when four people come and start pushing it, if these two people exhibit or exert the same forces, then the rock is not going anywhere. Whereas if these two people decide to push the rock in the same direction, together they work together like that, there the forces are not balanced. Here the forces in the middle were balanced. Because one person gave an equal force from the other side, another person from this also gave an equal force. Now, on this last case down there, thirdly there, when the two people are pushing the body, the body this way, it experiences what? It experiences. Now, for example, if these ones are pushing it like this, here initially this one was pushing. This one also was pushing. So the two forces had equal and opposite forces. Whereas here, what happens is there is no force coming from this one. So this force coming from these two guys of 2F gives the resultant which is acting in the forward motion. And hence the bodies will move in that direction. Uh, another illustration, I think those are enough. Let me see. So with that, the lady here is on the wall trying to push it. These examples, you do not know about them. You don't know what a hockey park is. So I can't give you such example. You see our people in a bus, those are the people who get jacked so much because they have a small part of their body in contact with the ground. You is seated in a car, you don't jack as much as a person stand. When kicking a football, it's an example of Newton's first law. Football will not change in its behavior unless I kick it with my leg. So the ball will first remain there until it waits for someone to kick it. The same here, the airplane also experiences some, some of these uh, Newton's laws. It has engines that give a drag which is pushing it outwards. Then that drag produces an equal and opposite force, which makes it go forward. The rocket, we have talked about it. Okay. Uh, when playing a tennis ball, you see this is Vanessa Williams. I don't know. One of the two. She's trying to hit the ball with that bat, with that uh, racket. And you see she's putting in a lot of energy for the ball to travel a very long distance. But you see as they swing, yeah, they start from behind. So they swing the rocket and then they make it come and contact the ball. When it contacts the ball, that net is either made of plastic. Hmm? The ball, the energy with which it comes, 
it is absorbed within those cables or those wires in the racket. Now the energy with which the other person is putting on the force used by the hands gives this ball a new impact, which when on reaction, the ball experiences a forward motion and it moves forward. Someone is in the chat. Is the force supposed to be unbalanced or provided a force acts on the body? Is the force supposed to be unbalanced? If the force is unbalanced, if it is balanced, then the body is not moving anyway. Unless if the body is experiencing what we call limiting equilibrium. If it is balanced, the body is not moving anyway. I am pushing you, someone else is also pushing you. You give an example of this one. People want to get married, but this woman has a man who is vibing her, has another man who is vibing her. They are both rich, they are both of the same religion, same tribe, they are all having money, they have houses, they all stay in Muyenga, they have equal forces on her. They are all hard sum. What will the woman do? She will remain single. Why? Perhaps they are giving her the same forces so she's getting the challenge of deciding who to take on. But if eh, one rich guy, teacher Hamza comes, driving a Range Rover, eh, gives you airtime worth 100,000 every day, takes you to Cafe Javas every day, he has showed you his flat where he's taking it in Kololo. Ah, and then there's a border guy. Mm -hmm. ah, airtime, baby, you know, I'm broke. Ah, lunch, eh, lunch, to reach commando, you know. Ah. My dear girl, what will you do? You will run very fast to Chicha Hamza. Why? He has a bigger force that is putting you to get married than the other one who almost, you might think he has no force at all. Now, what if there is no any other man? It's only Mr. Hamza who is vibing you. He wants to marry you. He's dating you. Hey, hey. He's doing you so many things. Takes you for birthdays in Dubai. Ah! You just say, man, when should we go? To where home? Uh -uh, may I, please, Mr. Hamza, you, are the, you even go there before I even take you there, if you know the house. Why? It's because the force I'm exerting on you is clearly showing that it's a very big resultant force that no one can withstand. And yeah, no one is withstanding it. No one, I mean, no one is uh, opposing it. So if there is no opposing force, the body easily moves in the direction of the force. If there is an opposing force, the body has to first overcome that force, then does what? Makes the body move. So I have to uh, first see how to overcome the border guy. I can even, if, if I'm uh, of that stage, I can even call the border guy and ask him, you man, what is your problem? Let me buy you for four, let me buy you five border borders and leave the woman alone. Then the guy will be very excited and swear you come when I've just bought you. So that is also what happens here. When the forces are big, they easily push over the body. The forces are equal in opposite directions. The body will stay there in a state of dilemma. That dilemma is equilibrium. Why? Because the forces acting on it on one side. I equal the forces acting on it on the opposite side. Okay. Therefore, having realized that, we go back to the blackboard. It is from here that you can see this example of Newton's law. When a body is resting on a surface, this body experiences a force due to its weight. Mg. This body experiences a normal reaction. Uh, therefore, because the body is not moving up or down, the normal reaction minus mg should have given us the resultant force. But because the acceleration is zero, it's not moving, then the resultant force is also what? Zero. It is from here that we always say the normal reaction minus mg is zero, and that's the normal reaction is always equal to mg when a body is at rest on a given surface. It is Newton's law that brings us to that. Then the other case also is if a body is on the horizontal, we have seen that if a body is to move, 
maybe it has a normal reaction here, it has a weight here. And maybe it has small F opposing motion, capital F driving it, and it is moving in the direction of capital F. Then this body will have capital F minus small F to give us the resultant force acting on the body. Because when bodies are acting in opposite directions, we saw we subtract, I mean forces. When they're acting in the same direction, we add. So with this, you can be in position to get the acceleration. Then also, another situation is, <clears throat> another situation can be when a body is being pulled, maybe. Hmm? For example, if there are two bodies, you can see trailers, eh? breakdowns. Maybe you have a car that is being pulled by another car. There is tension here in the stream. This car has its weight M2G. This car has its weight M1G. There is a driving force driving them horizontally. This one has a reaction R1. This one has a reaction R2. We have already seen because the cars are not moving up, R2 is equal to M2G. Then R1 is equal to M1G. Then the tension, you can have here friction F2 can have your friction F1. On car one, the driving force overcomes the tension, overcomes friction F1 to give us M1A. On car two, the tension overcomes the friction F2 to give us M2A. In that sense, you are looking at those forces that directly affect the body. Mass M1, the forces that make it go forward, the first car, is D overcoming the tension. Because if you separate them, they look like this. If you separate them, let me wrap this part. If you separate them, this is how they're going to look. If you separate them, you're going to have this. The first car, I look at it individually, it will face something like this. It will have its driving force pulling it forward. It will have tension resisting it. It will have friction, F1. That is why I've said D minus these two face the same direction is equal to M1A. Remember, this is the weight, M1G. It has a reaction, R1. Therefore, that is how the D became T minus, D minus T minus F1. Then the second one. Ideally, what is putting the second one is the tension in the stream, but it is overcoming friction F1. So tension minus F1 is equal to, this is F2, is equal to M2. So that's how these equations came about. So you treat them as if they are separated. But if you merge those two terms, if you merge these two items, when you merge those two equations, this is what you realize. This one, equation one plus equation two, so one plus two will give me D minus T plus F1 is equal to M1A. And tension minus F2 is equal to M2A. When you add these two, you'll have D minus F1 minus F2 is equal to M2 plus M1. Some books will write it like this as D as D minus F1 plus F2 is equal to M1 plus M2 times N. 
So what does that mean? It implies that it is taking the entire system as one body. That last equation will be showing that you are getting the entire system as one uniform body and you merge it, meaning that the tension does not matter in the motion of the system. What matters is the weight of the system, the frictional force F1 and F2, because the tension has two components there as a result of T1, which is positive, and then T2, which is negative. So the tensions carry, cancel out because they are of equal magnitude. Any questions so far on this I've talked about? Uh, uh, I beg your pardon on the last things you said, why T tension is being eliminated. Yeah. I've been I've said. Have you got how I derived how I derived the how I've got D minus F1 plus F2 is equal to M1 plus M2 times A. With this, uh, I've showed you that one of the equations was D minus F1 minus T is equal to M1. Then tension overcame F2 to give us M2A. When we merge it is two by addition, we have realized it comes to that. So that general equation shows you that the tension is not so relevant in making the system move. That is if the system you're taking it as a whole. When you take it as a whole, the only main forces that will affect the system are its driving force, then two, the frictions and the tires of the two parts of the vehicle, and then the masses of the two parts. Because one value of tension is positive and the other one is negative. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Now, uh, I want to assign you I'm going to send the write up on the, for the notes. And then I'll, we shall discuss examples next time. I want you to derive those equations again as you make the notes. Then also, you've got to understand in mechanics and look for where Newton's laws are. We shall only do around the three numbers in physics. In the math, we do all of them. So, in physics, we shall pick. Three numbers, which were which will be long numbers, which you write down in your books. You can agree in the group that let us do number this, number this, only three big numbers. Then you shall add on those ones I will send in the notes. Then I will calculate, I will do the calculations next week. But having confirmed that people have gone through these definitions correctly and they know exactly what is taking place. Otherwise, with that, with that unless if someone has a question. Any questions? So if no questions, uh, let me reach home and I send you the right time.